Hey there, this is Angie M bringing you a balm date update and I'm just taking a look at where I am on my little list here. We're going to talk some more about abundance and can I just take a minute for this uh, Lancome Ruby Star Lipstick. Mmm, it's still my favorite color to film with. You can tell that my lips don't lie. <laughs> my upper lip and my lower lip don't match up perfectly because of how the line looks. As I mash it out, it looks a little weird. It's making me sad. I'm just trying to fix the line a little bit. It's going to look weird. It doesn't in real life. In real life, it's actually right on my lip lines, but for some reason, the camera it looks weird. Ah. <laughs> I don't really overdraw. I probably should because, again, my, my the way my upper lip comes down on my lower lip pushes these sides out strangely because they don't, they don't match up. We'll live. We'll be fine. We're going to talk about some lip balms and then get into last abundance topic. So I've been using them. I really haven't used much more of my Chanel, which still smells fine. I'm really reluctant because I can't, I can't get her again. And I really don't want to use her <laughs> because I can't get her again. So I got to do more research, see if that is something that I can pick up you know, if they reformulated or whatnot. I really haven't been using my Bite Agave. I wasn't intending to until I'm through most of the other ones anyway. My Kiehl's number one lip balm, still one of my favorites. I am also not really rocking through that one right now too much because I'm trying to use up others. Uh, I really haven't used this guy this month because I've already used up quite a bit and I really like it. And I will use it up. I don't know if I will repurchase it. I it, This guy is kind of right now one of my favorites. So he is on the back burner because I know I will use him up as I as I use more stuff. And then this month I really gave a dig in to the, to the Nooks because it has a six month life. I purchased this guy from French Pharmacy and it is, so I've heard it pronounced Nooks and Nooks. I, I, I like I like French stuff. It's, it is definitely, it has a short life because it is definitely what we would call much more natural, much more natural than we see things listed as clean. I hate that label. I'm not the only one. There are a lot of us that hate that because it, it's meaningless. But in terms of being clean, if what you're talking about is natural products and natural oils, then that's, that's why this guy has the life expectancy it has because it doesn't have the preservatives in it. Now, Personally, I don't mind the preservatives. I just want my products to perform. This, even without preservatives, performs very well. Now, just so you know, when I got this, it actually was a little bit above the top. And now we've got it in there pretty good. So that is what's left. It goes very, very fast. It's very emollient. So as you apply it, it just sort of melts into your lips. And I can tell with my lips what part of my lips is driest because when I wear this or the next one, I'm going to show you that I've been using more frequently lately because I do want to use it up before it expires. I got that one crazy arch going. It sinks into that part of the lip and that part of the lip needs more right away. And it's always, it's always the right side of my lip that gets like that. So I will probably use this up. I will probably not repurchase it as much as I like it a six month life expectancy considering it's a balm and I might only use it at night because I wear lipsticks and lip glosses and other things that just that's not cool to me it doesn't doesn't really work and again I have things that I think do a little bit more for my lips it's fabulous don't get me wrong it, it is great and if your lips aren't super dry and in need of a lot of help it's going to be fantastic for you as a, as a day wear it also goes well kind of as a primer so it doesn't mess with things you're going to put on later but again I just I have things I like more something in that vein that I do like more is my Sol de Janeiro my Brazilian kiss I love this so this guy is chunky which I don't like is not he's not really a pocket balm and that's I so I've been using him smells amazing smells like our lotion is super buttery, super emollient. I love how it feels on my lips. It does, just does a spot on, fantastic job. Something I don't have, have down here, but that I love as well is 
is Charlotte Tilbury's College and Lip Bath. I can't slay it down. I did, I have been using that and you'll see in some other videos I am kind of wearing it in the Refresh Rose, which is, it looks like a milky pink, but on the lips it just looks really, it looks really, really nice. I've been wearing that and at night I wake up in the morning and my lips are just, they just, they feel good and they feel moisturized. It's got a little bit of a tingly sensation to it, like a pepperminty sensation, but it's not huge. So if you don't like that, it's it's not it's not like a buxom type situation at all. And I want to quickly just roll into talking about more on the abundance train as we work on this. So when what feels good causes pain, a final note. So this is kind of the double-edged sword of feeling good. And I want to touch on this, but I don't want to get too much into it because I am not an expert on addiction. But we all know that sometimes things start out feeling good and sometimes we use things as coping mechanisms that ultimately can turn into addiction and really wreak havoc in our lives and cause a lot of pain. I'm gonna stay away from that topic. What I want to say is if you are dealing with addiction, please seek professional help. Please seek the appropriate help, whether it's AA, whether it's therapy. Get the help that you need. Again, I don't want to touch that topic because addiction is something far different than I think what most of us just experience as the normal part of our daily lives. That's a, that's a whole other subset. And again, that, that's something for an expert to talk about. That's not something for me to talk about. What I want to talk about is the idea of obsession and transference, which are some things that I personally deal with. I know others who who deal with it that way, in particular using food as a substitute. I have done that for years and years. It, it's almost, it almost becomes something that you tether a positive emotion to, a happy emotion to, that later on becomes a way to punish yourself. I, I don't understand how that switch works. It's something that I've looked into and tried to study personally because I think if, if you can understand how that switch works for you, you can flip it and you can work on it. And really what I find is when I lean into things that bring me more joy or fall more in line with the desires of my life, you know, like right now filming, I've, I've been filming, this is my fourth video for the day. I'm gonna have to edit tonight. I wanna get things posted. I wanna be ahead of the game. I'm not shoving food in my face. I'm not trying to fill an imaginary void. And we're gonna talk about those voids because I have some, I had some epiphany moments and some thoughts that it's really not a void. I think it's something that we're not understanding in ourselves that we just, we treat like a void because it's what everybody calls it. And we're trying to fill it with stuff, whatever that stuff is. And it's never full because stuff isn't going to fill it. It's, I'm not gonna get on my soapbox because we're gonna talk about that later on. So fear really is what keeps us trapped. We get comfortable with, with feeling afraid and we get comfortable with getting stuck in whatever position we're in because sometimes dealing with the emotions that we're having or dealing with the circumstances that we're in is something that at the immediate moment we can't face. But what we should be doing instead of staying stuck in fear, we should be making those baby steps out of fear and into a place where we are able to make better decisions in our own self-interest as painful as it can feel. And that pain is vastly different than the pain we're in. We think it feels painful because it's a change. So I think about what's going on right, right now for a lot of people. A lot of people are out of work or a lot of people have had to switch from being in an office setting or being wherever it is they're working to working from home. And it feels real scary, right? It feels painful. It feels like everything in the world has shifted. And in a way it has. But if we start reframing that into something positive, we find again the coping mechanisms that we have are more positive. The resilience we have comes more from a place of positivity and that's really what we want. We don't want too much of a good thing because too much of a good thing makes that good thing no longer a good thing and suddenly it becomes a crutch to prop us up. And when we need something to prop us up, it's not a good thing anymore, right? It becomes a vehicle with which we're driving our, our self-destruction. So joy and feeling good isn't going to come from something without. You're going to hear me continue to talk about that because we're constantly under this consume, 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 consume idea that if you if you have these beautiful things, you're going to feel better. There are lots of people out there who have a ton of money and are surrounded by beautiful things and are perfectly miserable. And I know it's easy to say because when you come from 
a place of lack and not having enough and not knowing if there's going to be a roof over your head or food on the table. It can be easy to say, well, I'd rather have all of that stuff and be miserable than have nothing and be miserable. But the truth is it doesn't matter because no matter which end of that spectrum you're on, you're still miserable. So let's just stop looking at stuff. It's not stuff. It's, it's how we feel. It's in here. It's in here. That's what we're going for. So this is why this concept I think is so in intensely painful because when we're acting from that place of darkness, no matter how justified, right, we might have a really legitimate reason to feel how we feel. We're just kind of inviting more darkness on top of that. We're inviting more darkness. Sorry, how my ears are starting to itch because how my hair is sitting. When we invite more darkness, when we create more darkness in our lives, we're just digging that hole deeper. We're not digging ourselves out. We're not, we're not the donkey who's stepping up on the pile as someone shoveling the dirt in. We're literally shoveling the dirt out and getting it over our heads. So those feelings of darkness multiply exponentially. Here's the thing. Same thing with the good feelings. The good feelings, when we lean into those, multiply exponentially. How awesome is that? Right? Because when we're creating good feelings, we're surrounding ourselves in that light and we're creating good feelings in others too. And it's just, it's going. When, we, when we're panicking and the house is burning down and we're running around like crazy, just throwing all kinds of negative stuff, we're creating that in others. We're creating that panic and fear in others. So good, that whatever your feeling of good is, and we're going to, again, we're getting that in more depth, comes from within. It doesn't come from things or stuff or money. It comes from within how we feel and embracing the things that light us up. Things and others aren't going to achieve feeling good in the long run. So in the immediate, we might, we might purchase something that we find really, really beautiful in the moment, but we might find that we don't use it, that we're setting it aside, that it just kind of becomes another thing in a pile of clutter. You get to choose. So th this might be the most important part here, and this might be the most important part of all of this that we're talking about. You get to choose. How is it you want to feel? How do you want to feel? Because the choice is yours. I know a lot of times when we're feeling numb or we're feeling down or we're feeling bitter and we come from a place of being the victim and we want to blame everybody else, we act like it's not us, right? We act like those feelings aren't us. Things are being done to us. So we're justified in those feelings. Here's the thing. No. No. You don't have to react that way. You don't have to live that way. That's your choice. I don't care how shitty your circumstances are. You're choosing how to respond to those circumstances. You can choose to let those be your circumstances and you can wallow in bitterness and anger. Or you can say, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to change this. I might not be able to change it today. I might not be able to change it tomorrow. It might take me years. I'm going to change it. And you take on that mentality that you are in control. Things aren't being done to you. You're not letting things be done to you. Things are happening around you and you're going to respond to them from a place of grace. You're going to respond to them from a place of positivity. Hey, this is an opportunity to make things better. Thank you for letting me see the cracks. Thank you for letting me see the shittiness of a circumstance. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make it better because here's the thing. The universe hears that and responds to that. And you will find that when you take on the I am going to figure this out mentality, you will find that things start happening in your favor. You start getting opportunities to show what you are capable of. It's funny, every time, I, th I think, you know, in work in particular, every time I hit a place where I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do or hitting what I'm supposed to hit or being like, wow, I'm really awful or bad at this, when I make the decision, you know what? Maybe maybe X isn't working for me right now. I'm going to turn my focus over to something else. And you know what I find? I find that I get involved in projects that help move me forward. I find that I get involved in things that inspire me or things that lead me. And you know what? When I dig into that stuff, when I dig into that more positive stuff, when I dig into the things that help others and help me to show up with skills and talents that I have that maybe aren't showcased in the main part of what I do, guess what? The main part of what I do comes right along with. All of a sudden, I find that things start clicking there and things start working. And the whole reason is because when we focus and obsess about something, 
from a negative, when we start trying to control and force things to work for us, the wheels fall off. They always do, right? Because we're adding stress. We're adding unnecessary freaking stress. Why do the wheels fall off of things? Because we've piled so much garbage that literally they can't take the load. So when you keep pounding, when you keep adding to that stress load, what the hell do you think is going to happen? The wheels are going to fall off. So let's start taking the stress away. Let's start figuring things out. Instead of piling on the bad feelings, let's start going, how do I figure this out so that that's not what's happening? How do I get some levity in, into my life? Does it mean that maybe I hit pause and watch a movie that I love? Does it, does it mean I sit down and, and read a few pages of a book I really enjoy right before bed and clear my head? Turn your focus. Reframe the situation. I love it. Uh, from, from Pirates of the Caribbean, one of, one of uh, Captain Jack Sparrow's quotes, which I actually have taped in one of my planners, is the problem isn't the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem. We all have problems. I don't care how positive and optimistic and warm and inviting and lovely someone is. I guarantee they have problems. The reason they're the way they are is because of how they choose to address those problems. So you can see what's going on in the world right now is, oh my God, we're all, oh, it's so awful. All the world is melting down. Or you can take it as an opportunity to turn your focus and to do something else, to create something else, to be inspired, to do something that helps others. And there are so many people out there that are doing wonderful, amazing things. And I feel like we don't hear about any of it because all you hear is the negative and the ugly and the ah. We have to stop that because that is what is crushing us. That is what is killing us every day, slowly, painfully. So, you get to choose. The choice is yours. How is it you want to feel? And again, I'm just flipping through some notes to make sure there isn't one last thing that I want to hit here. Because again, like I said, I have been working. I got, we got, we got stuff to go through this year. We have stuff to talk about. All right. Using the benefit of abundance for yourself and others, right? That's what I was just touching on. We're going to be we're going to be talking about more of that. I was doing some free writing and I was looking at some experimenting and framing things in the positive. And let me tell you, it is common, boys and girls. We are going to dive in. I am going to dive in and I am going to give you some very honest feedback about myself personally because I feel like the more we talk about things, again, superficially, the more we, we put the sugar coating on things, all we're doing is a disservice to ourselves and others. So we're going to cut that out. We're going to stop that. And we, we, my friends, we are going to start doing some digging. And we're going to start trying to heal. And you got to name it. You got to say it. You got to call it out. And you got to be able to forgive it. So on that note, I'm going to call it. This is video four for the day. We are, we are, we are just cracking along here. I wanted to get it done. I've got... Even though it's gray outside, I got some natural lighting. I got the light box. I don't look all washed out for a change. I'm not filming at night. Yes. Or before the sun comes up, even better. Because let me tell you, this lighting, I have a, you know, my special visitor is hanging out. I'm going to let her out of here. It just, <sighs> breathe in. Just breathe. I feel like that's what we're all missing is breathing. Just live it. Because it's not going to change. It's not going to stop. The world doesn't stop turning. Things don't stop happening. We have to keep moving. We can't just freeze and sit on the couch and Netflix and binge. Though we want to. I want to. I want to. I want to succumb to that. I want to succumb to those feelings. But I know what's going to happen if I do. And the outcome's not going to be good. And I'm not going to feel good about it later. So we're not doing it. We are going to keep on keeping on. And we're not going to hold the line anymore. We're going to move the line forward. We are, we're going to move forward. We're not just going to keep the status quo. We're not going to let the feelings bury us. We're not going to let the negative news bury us. We're not going to let all the negativity bury us. We're going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. And I want you to keep moving with me. So I'm going to call it. I'll see you in the next one.